श्रीमद् भागवतम कांडो फाइव चैप्टर एट टेक्स्ट थर्टी so this is not a verse this is a prose we will just read uh, three words at a time ityevam nigudha nirvedo visrujya mrigim mataram punar bhagavat kshetram उपशमशील मुनिगणदयुत शालग्राम कालंजरा प्रत्याज गाम इन दिस वे Nigudha, hidden, nirveda, completely unattached to material activities. Visrajya, giving up. Mrigim, the deer. Mataram, its mother. Puna, again. Bhagavat Kshetram, the place where the supreme Lord is worshipped. Upashamashila, completely detached from all material attachments. Muni Gana Dayitam, which is dear to the great saintly residents. Shalakramam, village known as Shalakram. Pulaste Pulaha Ashramam. to the ashrama conducted by such great sages as kulastya and kulaha kalanjarat from the kalanjara mountain where he had taken his birth from the womb of a deer pratyajagama he came back Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Sri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki. Translation: Although Bharat Maharaj received the body of a deer, by constant repentance, <clears throat> he became completely detached from all material things. He did not disclose these things to anyone, but he left his mother deer in a place known as Kalanjara Mountain, where he was born. He again went to the forest of Shalagram. And to the ashram of Kulastya and Kulaha. <clears throat> Please repeat. Although Bharat Maharaj received the body of a deer, by constant repentance, he became completely detached from all material things. He did not disclose these things to anyone, but he left his mother deer. in a place known as kalanjara mountain where he was born he again went to the forest of shalagram and to the ashram of kulastya and kulaha purpur bhajan grace se bhakti vidan swami shloka pad ki jai it is significant that maharaj bharat by the grace of vasudev remembered his past life he did not waste a moment he returned to kolaha ashrama to the village known as chalagram association is very meaningful therefore is con tries to perfect one who enters the society the members of this society should always remember that the society is not like a free hotel all the members should be very careful to execute their spiritual duties so that whoever comes Will automatically become a devotee and will be able to return back to Godhead. 
in this very life. Although Bharat Maharaj acquired the body of a deer, he again left his birth and home, in this case the mountain Kalanjara. No one should be captivated by his birthplace and family. One should take shelter of the association of devotees and cultivate Krishna consciousness. Om Ajnana Timiran Dhasta Jnanan Janashalakaya Chakshurun Melikam Yena Tasme Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manopishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamaham Dadati Svapadam Tikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parjana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam Shcha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Ratha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kancha Gaurangi Rathe Vrindavani Shari Vrishapano Sute Devi Pramami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpata Rubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namam Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Made Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this is the story of Bharat Maharaj. For those of you who do not know. So Bharat Maharaj, uh, this is a very significant incident. It's actually not a story. All these descriptions of the Puranas are historical narrations. Purana means old. So, old narrations of the past. What kind of narrations? Dharmartha Kama Mokshanam Upadesha Samanvitam um, What is that? This is the definition of Itihasa. Itihasa. Yeah, Purva Vritta Katha Yuktam, that's the word. So, Dharmartha Kama Mokshanam Upadesha Samanvitam Purva Vritta Katha Yuktam Itihasam Prachakshate. So, what is that? A text that contains, uh, consists of narrations of past events and includes instructions about religiosity, economic development, sense gratification and liberation is called an Itihasa. So there is a slight difference between the word Itihasa and Puran. Itihasa is when an author is the witness of what he is writing. Whereas Puran is much older than that. He has not witnessed it. He has heard from authoritative sources and he is then writing. So it may not be right, written also. It can be by oral reception as well. Which was the case before Vyasadeva wrote it down. So. But the point here is not just any history. We have history lessons in school. We learned, you know, Second World War, First World War. And in India, we learned about, you know, the British occupation of India and the Mughals. Um, this is what we learned. Much of our history was not taught to us, actually. Um, <clears throat> but all that history is just history. There's nothing to learn from that. You. You just have to remember the dates, remember who is the ruler and who is what, what mutiny happened, what war happened, that's it. There's no, there's nothing to learn from that, that is applicable to our life now. Whereas, 
धर्मार्थ काम मोक्षाण उपदेश समन्वित पूर्व पूर्व वृत्त कथा युक्त सो दिस इज ऑल्सो हिस्ट्री वॉट वी आर स्टडिंग श्रीमद भागवतम नाउ दिस क्लास इज अस्ट्री क्लास बट वॉट कैंड ऑफ अस्ट्री क्लास इन विच देर आर इंस्ट्रक्शन फॉर आवर डिवेलपमेंट आवर एडवांसमेंट सो धर्म अर्थ काम मोक्ष आर चतुर पुरुषार्थ फोर गोल्स ऑफ ह्यूमन लाइफ but antima purushartha which is even higher than moksha is prema krishna prema prema pomartho mahan that is the fifth purushartha panchama purushartha so this uh, a text a historical narration which teaches us about uh, how to advance in spiritual life that is what is consisting in the itihasas and the puranas beneficial history lesson that's what we will call it spiritually beneficial history lessons that what that's what we are having uh, not like useless history lessons and concocted skewed history where we don't even know our history properly and as if <clears throat> you know there is no no depth to our culture that's how we were taught in india so this is meaningful history so now in this particular narration what we are reading is uh, we are in the midst of the bharat maharaj reincarnation so in this history we learn about reincarnation the signs of reincarnation how it happens so that is a beneficial lesson so it is a science and history at the same time you will have a history lesson and a science lesson both disconnected and even the science is disconnected from god and the history is also disconnected from god no use it's an atheistic useless model of education the current education model it's just making an ass out of the eternal soul because after the degree after the phd we just have to go with begging bowl to ask for job otherwise our degree is useless phd is useless so there's no it is making us a slave to their system to the capitalist agenda and we are thinking we are achieving big big things you know by education it's useless we don't even know who you are like after phd we don't even know abcd about ourselves so what is the point if i don't even if i can't even answer the question who who am i so what is the meaning of such education there is no self awareness we always answer who am i in pertaining uh, in relation with the body i am mr so and so i am um, of this nationality of this gender son of so and so um, this race so in this way we um, identify ourselves but that is wrong the body that is our the identity of the body current body but the atma the self the soul he doesn't have this identity does not belong to him it is like a dress vasam sujirna ki tha vidhay so like dress every day we change to new dress like that every life we change into a new body that's all the body is like a dress on the soul that is the first lesson we learn in bhagavad gita like we our our dress goes with us wherever we go it goes with us but it is not a life just because it is moving movement does not mean a life yes there is a person who is alive behind the movement but it is not necessarily that the moving thing is what is alive a person who may be moving it uh, may be causing it to move so our body just like our dress is not alive but it moves because we wear it similarly our body is actually always dead we call a dead body somebody died but actually the body is always dead even now our body is dead it only moves because i am moving it just like the shirt it is never alive it is never alive it is always dead so the body is always dead and the soul is always living that is the actual fact so when we are able to separate these two things the atma and the body then that is the beginning of our education then our education actually begins today our so called education system after the entire completion and graduation and proud proudly we can take some put a hat are now bakra you have become <laughs> take this certificate you have become bakra of the system the capitalist system so we we celebrate 
oh my graduation ceremony ceremony means now you have become a successfully you become a slave now you find a job become a slave get a salary otherwise your education is useless repay back all your money what is a student loan so that is the whole point of the graduation ceremony so patyuna thakur has written a nice song vidyar vilas um katainu ka katainu kal so he said jadavidya jato mayar vaibha this material education is a is a grand display of illusion mayaya apaharta gnana krishna calls it in the 7th chapter 15th verse he calls this material education as mayaya apaharta gnana apaharanam means kidnap right so apaharta means mayaya apaharta gnana that means the person thinks is very knowledgeable but actually his knowledge is kidnapped or stolen by maya so he has his illusory sense of knowledge but actually his knowledge is useless he cannot it cannot save him from the clutches of birth death old age and disease this this uh, samsara cycle it doesn't help him so here what we are learning <clears throat> in this uh, history of bharat maharaj is that bharat maharaj was a great king we are learning the signs of reincarnation as he is reincarnating that's that whole history is here so he was a great king and undisputed kingdom the entire earth was under his rulership so undisputed kingdom beautiful wife obedient children nothing to worry about in material life still gave up material life as if it was stool in the toilet the exact description is there what is it was like um, hmm? not this one yeah ah uh, you see this this is also actually this is from the bhagavatam now uh, 51443 <laughs> let's read this uh, this translation in the chaitanya charitamrita la um it's the verse yodhutya jan darasutan suhrit rajyam hridish prishah jaho yuvai va malavad uttama shloka lalasah uttama shloka lalasah greed for the supreme lord lalasah means greed greed for money this is all useless it's dangerous in fact it is a one of the three gateways to hell kama krodha tatha lobhas um trividham naraka sedam varam nashanam atmanah kama krodha tatha lobhas tasmad etat trayam tyajet that is the injunction what is that you should give up kama krodha and lobha but this same lobha or lalasa if we have for uttama shloka that is that is actually what we should have greed for so bharat maharaj had this excessive greed for krishna uttama shloka means shloka means uh, shloka uttama means highest best why is the lord called uttama shloka because he is glorified with the best of shlokas so that's why the lord is called uttama shloka uttama shloka lalasana he was very greedy for krishna and therefore he gave up his very comfortable material position and you can switch the off because it will cold right is it cold <clears throat> and how did he give up malavad so let's read the translation lord krishna the supreme personality of godhead is offered sublime poetic prayers by those trying to attain his favor thus he is known as uttama shloka being very eager to gain the association of lord krishna king bharat although in the prime of youth gave up his very attractive wife affectionate children most beloved friends and opulent kingdom exactly as one gives up stool after excreting it see so this is how <laughs> bharat maharaj gave up so he was so 
when he gave up like this what happened he was meditating in the forest on krishna take prasadam uh, one floor up take prasadam and go fourth floor yeah hari krishna so <coughs> the um, what is that yeah he became a deer you know he he was meditating and he got attracted to a deer and he became a deer after that and today's verse is his lamentation in the body of the deer so although bharat maharaj received the body of a deer by constant repentance he became completely detached from all material things now this repentance is very important let's see what is the sanskrit word for repentance visrajya nigudha nirvedaha so of course the word exact repentance is not there But of course we know that all his actions are out of repentance only he uh, repenting you know previous verse also he was repenting alas you know, he was saying what a grave mistake i have done so this repentance is very important it purifies us repentance purifies us there is a nice verse 331 13 atapyaman hrudaye vasatam This is Atapyamana Hridaya Vasitam. What is this Atapyamana Hridaya? Repentant heart. Avasitam. So the Lord resides in the repentant heart. he is you see he is unlimited but he is perceived in the repentant heart so by repentance we actually become purified that means we realize our mistake purify means what is purification actually that means some dust is going no the dust of materialism is going that means how the how does the dust go when we have knowledge purification means to be in knowledge so when we are in knowledge and we apply that knowledge to ourselves and we correct ourselves with that knowledge that is called purification when we correct ourselves with the knowledge transcendental knowledge that is called purification so then we will regret what we have done out of in ignorance that is repentance that is a sign of knowledge but if i repent without understanding what my oh you know, i repent only because uh, of some external factor that is not very that repentance is not the same repentance out of knowledge is the best repentance out of um emotion or you know black. huh blackmail you know this kind of coercion <laughs> this is not the same huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <clears throat> just because of caught oh now say that oh i'm i'm sorry so that is actually in very that is fake in fact it's not even repentance um, but um, sometimes they repent for example some fight will happen between the boy and girl and then because uh, that um, other partner's uh, emotions were hurt or uh, after some time he feels repentant but um, you know that kind of repentance is not the same as repentance with knowledge so repenting with knowledge means oh i am a soul i am not this body oh how much time i have wasted oh i am krishna servant i am not serving krishna i have derided him in so many ways all these lifetimes millions of lifetimes how ungrateful i was so this is repentance and here bharat maharaj after having taken to this process so seriously he gave up fell down and therefore he was repenting so that repentance purified him so all the bharat maharaj received the body of a deer by constant repentance he became completely detached from all material things he did not disclose these things to anyone but he left his mother deer in a place known as kalanjara mountain where he was born this so first of all how will the deer even understand anything even if he said how is he going to even say hmm? human itself will not understand 
Yeah, human parents still don't understand. They fight with uh, people who are trying to join up. So, dear, what will understand? <laughs> so, he did not say to anyone. This is the other thing. He could not even disclose his feelings to anyone. No, that will make it more intense. And Krishna wanted it like that. So, it becomes so intense that, you know, he will never make that mistake again. This is Krishna's way of um, helping the soul. Where he was born, so he went to the Kalanjara mountain. He again went to the forest of Shalagram and to the ashram of Kulastya and Kulaha. So he again, again went to the same place where he was doing his uh, meditation. So now in the purport, Prabhupada is ex- explaining my very important matter. Association is very meaningful. Therefore, his contrast to perfect one who enters a society. Unfortunately, today's is gone. It's doing something else. Yeah, at the end of the video, right? I asked him, which is gone as it is. So, <clears throat> it's gone tries to perfect one who enters a society. Uh, the members of this society should always remember that the society is not like a free hotel. Why are you saying like this? Because uh, we should become serious. We should not simply take it up as a place of eating, sleeping, you know. That's not the whole point of... Uh, that, that's not against the point of a temple. Uh, Bhaktisiddhan Saraswati Thakur used to say that uh, if it is for one's own purpose, he may not use anything of... So, uh, for a personal sake, uh, for personal uh, reasons, one may not use anything from the temple. Uh, but uh, for Krishna, one should use very grandly everything. Hmm? So, Bhaktisiddhan Saraswati Thakur, he was uh, living very simply, but for the, the Lord, he was. But for the Lord, he was having very grand arrangements for everything, for preaching. So that is proper use. So the <clears throat> uh, place is not like a free hotel. So in other words, we have to become, when we are staying in the temple, staying near the temple, we should become very serious. We should remember the reason why we are associating, to become serious. If we want to associate in a way that, you know, I will just uh, keep my distance arm's length. And that is not good. We should associate nicely and advance ourselves and help others also advance. (laughs) All the members should be very careful to execute their spiritual duties so that whoever comes will automatically become a devotee and will be able to return back to Godhead in this life. So if everybody is uh, doing nicely uh, their service, it will create a very nice mood. Anybody who comes uh, will automatically become a very good devotee. <clears throat> Although Bharat Maharaj acquired the body of a deer, he again left his hearth and home, in this case the mountain Kalanjara. No one should be captivated by his birthplace and family. One should take shelter of the association of devotees and cultivate Krishna consciousness. You know, Nepal's uh, country national tagline. Huh? It is uh, apparently from Ramayana, but that verse seems like an interpolation, not sure. So, Janani Janma Bhumi Swargadapi Gariyasi. Janani Janma Bhumi Swargadapi Gariyasi. That means a mother and motherland are more uh, um, better than even heaven. Apparently, Lord Ramachandra said that. But he can say that. Because his mother is who? Devotees. You know. And it is an eternal relationship. Like Krishna and Yashoda. There is different mother and son relationship than our mother and son relationship in this world. And Ayodhya is his uh, Janma Bhumi. So, Ayodhya is of course better than Swarga. 
but to generalize it and say anybody whoever wherever will come from so what the person who is born in yemen and will come to going war can you say the janani janmabhumi is swarga to bigari as or is better than heaven yemen is better than heaven is it uh, israel palestine going on war is it better than heaven so this is not actually generalized statement even if lord ramachandra said because when i saw that verse in the ramayana the previous verse and the next verse don't seem to have anything related to that so i don't know if it's uh, because his interpolations also came into being but even let's say for argument sake he said it he can say it <coughs> so but uh, nepal their tagline is this janani janmabhumi is swarga api gadiyas but here is it is said that no one should be captivated by his birthplace and family so this patriotism is condemned in bhagavatam you know especially in india you know patriotism is very strong you know hindustan you know bharat mata you know big big they are very much passionate about their country it is good to be proud of the spiritual culture of the country but not just because i am born there i must now love this place like that every person in every country will feel the same thing if it is if he finds it worthy that country so he may feel like that but that is uh, that is not uh, correct in fact go khara bhauma ijjadi go kar bhauma ijjadi means one who worships the land of his birth is considered an ass you know according to bhagavad gita is patriots they are actually compared to animals very strong word is used गोख go means cow khara means ass because what is wrong in worshiping man's motherland first of all the wrong is that in vedic uh, culture the entire earth is considered as mother hmm? not one country because when i say that okay my motherland is india and i am indian i am proud to be indian that means what you think yourself superior or better than others by nature by by definition if i love my country that i that means i don't love other countries as much as i do love my country otherwise there's no meaning of no i love my country i love any, every other country then what is the use of your patriotic right so if i am saying that i am you know i love my india means you don't love pakistan as much by definition you don't love bangladesh as much you don't love any any other country as much as you do india for spiritual culture yes it is punya bhumi fine for that reasons but people are patriotic not for that reason their own like you know yeah as you said cricket match oh flag and everything you know going there and what are you proud of are you proud of the spiritual culture of india or are you proud of virat kohli let's be honest and that cricket match does it have any spiritual significance at all our life is being wasted at least the cricketers are earning some good money we are spending money to pay ticket or uh, uh, what is that uh, cable connection so we are wasting our money wasting our time at least they are getting money if not uh, even if the sport has no significance in life but they are earning some money at least what you are doing so that kind of patriot what is the meaning of such patriots same in football everything everywhere so <clears throat> when we are attached what happens is you know there is a you know when um, especially in the border you know they fight india pakistan you know kashmir border 
So if I suppose hate Pakistan, for example, hate, and you know, I hate Pakistan, I shoot him, whatever. So if I'm maintaining this consciousness all my life, and in some war, you know, in the border, and I die, what will happen? Because I was meditating so much on Pakistan, 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 now I'll become Pakistani. Because that's how Bhagavad Gita says it works. What we meditate on most in our life, that will influence our thought at the time of death, and that is what will become. And that's how Bharat Maharaj, although he gave up his kingdom and went to the forest to meditate, he got attracted to a deer, a small deer, you know, whose mother died because the tiger ate it. So he raised the deer, and he became so attached to it that he excessive attachment. He forgot all his spiritual duties, and then he died, thinking of the deer. And then next life he became deer now. So this is. So if I think of my motherland, motherland, out of hatred, even if I think of someone, I will become like that. I will acquire the qualities because I'm. I will acquire qualities according to what I associate with. That's why to love, uh, to repose our affection on someone is not too good. To hate someone also is not too good. Because both will make us attached to that person. That person means that quality. Every person is, uh, you know, has a certain sattvagunna, sattvig, rajasik, tamasik. So if a person is very tamasik and I hate him, really hate him, then I am always meditating on him. Oh, he's doing this, you know, he did that, he did this. So I'm, my meditation is on him. So that meditation will influence my, you know, future, my birth, my next. Even in now also I am disturbed. Next life also I will be disturbed. I will get that point of quality. So it's very uh, dangerous to be patriotic. And what are we doing? Okay, even if I die in my uh, country and then take birth in the same country because I'm so attached to this country, I will be born as a tree, for example, so that I will never move away from my country. And this happened actually. You know, Prabhupada said he was walking one day, morning walk, and there were two houses with the wall and between the two walls there was one tree of course Prabhupada's vision is different he can see all these things because he's a pure devotee Siddha he's completely perfect so personalities like Prabhupada and Narad Muni they all can see these things so he's Prabhupada said that this tree actually he is the owner of this house he was the owner of this house he was so attached and he old and he died. He had grandchildren and everything. And then he became old and he was so attached to his house. He died and then now he take, took birth as a tree. So that he will always be near, near that house. So this is what will happen. So even if I am a patriot, I may come out of the country. right? No, you stay in the country, you become a tree there. And thousands of years you stay there. In some forest somewhere in the India. So is that a good uh, future? So... Thing. So that's why we have we cannot be attached to anything material, whether it's land or family or um, what is that, our race or humanity even. You know. Or some people are animal activists, always thinking about animals. Next life will become animal like this deer. Bharat Maharaj became deer because he was taking care of the animal. People keep pets now, cat, cat videos, cat photos, keep cats, dogs. What they will become? They, they will become dogs and cats. That's exactly what will happen to them. And that's what he, here he pet, you know, he has a pet deer and he became a deer. How advanced person became a deer? We are not even advanced. What will become? So, <clears throat> this is very dangerous. We are playing with fire. So, we don't know what is, the, how the law of karma works. How Krishna's law of karma works. We think karma means, oh, some bad karma, good karma. Very, very simplistic definitions we have. Oh, we did something bad, he got it. Okay, instant karma, something. And then we laugh it off. We don't think, you know, how, how subtle these laws are. Why every time locking that door? For what? Open it now, wide open. Never mind, there's no sound coming from the other side. Two, two together. No, both together, Prabhu, Prabhu, please help. I don't want these distractions like this. So much distraction. Open it completely. Open the door completely. 
every single time nonsense so <clears throat> so you see this is very important thing you have to understand um, so that's why we have to get attached to krishna nothing of this world that does not mean that that does not mean that we immediately take sanyas and leave all the family and everything we are not saying that even though one may stay in the family one should understand that this is not my permanent situation it's a temporary situation that's like you know in a bus stop bus stop so many people gather at one point we don't get too attached to them right so like that we are all getting together for some time and then we will separate so no need to get too much attached so it is easier said than done it is it is it can only be done with knowledge and with service with realization that's why we have to spend as much time as possible in the temple with the devotees and engage in krishna service so that our attraction to krishna increases we should not focus on reducing our attachment to family or uh, country or anything because that is a result of our attachment to krishna i'll give an example um you know one lecture prabhupad was giving and he said the definition of yogi bhogi rogi yogi bhogi rogi what is the definition yogi means the person who is self controlled bhogi means the person who enjoys his senses and rogi is the diseased person so yogi he passes stool once a day he passes stool once a day bhogi passes stool twice a day and the rogi passes stool three or more times a day he said like this. that means he is eating according to one's eating one will go that many times to the toilet and you know so one disciple prabhupada disciple he was listening to the lecture and said okay wow then after that class he wanted to go to the toilet he had to go but he heard that yogi goes only once so he wanted to be yogi at the same time so he was controlling ah, you know <laughs> so prabhupad was passing by he saw what what happened to you prabhupad you tell you know yogi but you know now i, I don't know what to do prabhupad was laughing this is not the meaning of yogi <laughs> yogi means not the control valve should not be the anus the control valve is here in the mouth the control is not that i eat like a glutton and then try to control the stool from coming out that's to pass stool only once means i have to eat less that's the point so he is concentrating on the stool part because the instruction was pass in stool once twice thrice okay i should pass stool only once but that would mean i have to eat less that's where the control is so i should not focus on the passing stool part i should focus on the eating part so similarly our detachment to material things is not we should is not what we should focus on people get scared of spiritual life because what if i you know you know leave family and leave you know I, or if somebody their family members are going through spiritual uh, churning or they are you know becoming spiritually serious people become afraid oh what if he leaves good for good for him good for him and good for me also because ultimately we should not be attached because one day whether we like it or not death will take us away is going to separate us anyway either we are dragged out or we decently go out with decency otherwise how will you like if somebody drags you out of this temple room no you know what is that no without any respect so we will be dragged out of our, our so called comfortable home one day anyway we have to be separated from our family there's no way we can live with them forever so i rather live with knowledge decently huh? with dignity as <laughs> no dignity simply dragged out man handled that's not nice so we should and also it involves so much pain because i'm so attached and now suddenly i have to be you know detached i mean taken away 
and i'll be you know crying and just in that situation i die what will happen and i seeing all my relatives crying around me how my mind will work at that time so that's why it is said it is best to die alone when nobody is there of course better is to die in the association of devotees because they will chant hari krishna but otherwise it is said it is best to die alone when nobody knows so it is best to die without any relatives around that is also stated in bhagavad gita so um people think these are all very sad things oh he is going away from home what is this you know what is that this is truth let's face it that's truth so why not we wake up to the truth why we, why are we still uh, you know blind to it why we want to be in slumber sleeping wake up you also understand then it is easier you have to have knowledge that's why grahasthas the householders those who are having family and you know work and everything they always used to the vedic culture is they always invite the sanyasis to their home and feed them what is the point in feeding sanyasis because when the sanyasis come it is not simply to give them food only brahman bhojan you know sadhu bhojan bhojan is not the main thing there of course it is to serve that service attitude is good but at the same time the sadhu will speak knowledge about life from the scriptures so he will enlighten them what is that um, 11938 right Yes. 39. Yeah. Nunam bhagavato brahman griheshu brahamedhinam nalakshate hyavasthanam api godohanam pachit. Parishit Maharaj is saying to Sukadeva Goswami, O powerful brahmana, it is said that you hardly stay in the houses of men long enough for a cow to be milked. Sukadeva Goswami, He used to go from door to door and beg one, actually not door to door. He will just go to one house. When the cow is being milked, he will stand outside and he will ask one uh, chuluka, means one palm full of milk. And he will drink, that's it, that's his food for the day. Done. Next day, he will go to some other house where some of this cow and some milk and that's it. And... while the cow is being milked he will preach that's the point so the sadhus they should not just eat and you know one big belly fat no <laughs> he should enlighten the grahasthas so that they actually learn something so this gokhara so that's why prabhupad said here no one should be captivated by his birthplace and family one should take shelter of the association of devotees and cultivate krishna consciousness this one verse you see katham priyaya anukampitaya sangam rahasyam ruchiramscha mantran ृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृतृ
specifically a wife is always very kind and sympathetic to and always pleases her husband in a solitary place who could give up the association of such a dear and affectionate wife small children talk in broken language very pleasing to hear and their affectionate father always thinks of their sweet words how could he give up their association one's elderly parents and one's sons and daughters are also very dear a daughter is especially dear to her father and while living at her husband's house she is always in his mind who could give up that association aside from this in household affairs there are many decorated items of household furniture and there are also animals and servants who could give up such comforts the attached householder is like a silkworm which weaves a cocoon in which it becomes imprisoned unable to get out simply for the satisfaction of two important senses the genitals and the tongue one is bound by material conditions how can one escape this is the situation of everyone in this material world everyone they are bound this material world is a prison but you don't see the prison bars or any chain you don't see because the chain is the shackle of material attachment in fact you see this tavad ragadaya stenas stenas tavad karagraham graham tavan mohom grinigado yavat krishna na tejana my dear lord krishna until people become your devotees <clears throat> their material attachments and desires remain thieves their homes remain prisons and their affectionate feelings for their family members remain put shackles their homes remain prisons karagriham griham karagriham means jail griham means house their griham is actually karagriham they say home sweet home you know in a jail in a prison you are inside the jail and the the jailer he locks it from outside this jail maya krishna employs her his maya we lock our own doors inside the house and stay inside look at this jail kara griham griham our homes are prisons right who is locking we are also the locking from inside and staying <laughs> that is the kind of jail this is how come we are imprisoning ourselves we are supposed to go to vaikuntha completely out of this world but we are imprisoning ourselves in the home and calling it home sweet home although inside fighting like anything like cats and dogs but home sweet huh? <clears throat> so this is maya this is maya so until krishna uh, this is who you know saying is brahma himself is saying to krishna until people become your devotees their material attachments and desires remain thieves why thieves material attachments why they are thieves there is another verse to explain that why किमात्मनानेन जहाति अंततः किं रक्तहारैः स्वजनाख्यदस्युभिः किं जायया संस्मृति हेतु भूतया मर्त्यस्य गेहैः किं हायुषो व्ययः व्हाट इज द यूज ऑफ द मटेरियल बॉडी व्हिच ऑटोमेटिकली लीव्स इट्स ओनर एट द एंड ऑफ लाइफ वी आर यू नो सो मच अट्रैक्टेड टू आवर बॉडी Hmm. but at the end of our life the body will leave us so what is the use of this body come come this side and what is the use of all one's family members who are actually plunderers thieves taking away money that is useful for the service of the lord and spiritual offerings <laughs> these are very strong words no materialist will, will like to hear these things swajanakya dasubhi thus you means thief our attachments are thieves why you may say no this is my son this is my daughter this is my wife this is my home these are my parents 
but they demand so many things you know to to necessary is one thing but there is more than necessary so much to happen right yeah necessary we can understand that is everybody should have we are not saying that is you know they should they should be starved to death we are not saying that but beyond necessary what is the need that is a waste of money that is actually stealing you know if if a wallet if somebody picks my wallet and you know steals it i'll come call police 999 and you know where is my, my wallet is stolen you know somebody but wife will take wallet like this oh darling please take credit card otp everything take phone also you take actually what thief same thing only but because of affection we allow and there we don't have affection so we complain to police but objectively the same thing is happening somebody is taking your money and spending for what they want that's what is happening <laughs> so this is svajanakya dasubhi thieves out of affection we may not call them thieves but is thief only so that's why kamasya nendriya pritir labho jiveta yavata jivasya tatva jignasa nartho yascheha karma bhi our economic problem our economics vedic economics means kamasya nendriya pritir labho jiveta yavata that means we should only spend that much which is enough for us to maintain our life as long as we can remain alive enough no need to become this millionaire and billionaire and it comes with a whole load of troubles no need communist says that state is the owner of everything and you just work and take your salary and be happy and that's it capitalist says no you become an entrepreneur and then become you know businessman become a millionaire become crorepati and everything both are useless both are wrong because we should only have that much which you know is necessary for us so what if we have something more suppose i have inherited some land and i have more than what i need for my eating and living what should i do if i have extra money extra that is krishna's special gift to you to use it in krishna's service there is an opportunity for you to serve krishna krishna is giving you more than what you need means he is taking care that okay you don't have to suffer but that extra money what are you going to do now uh, he wants to see if you want to use it for my own uh, enjoyment or my family's enjoyment education children education that means i am wasting the money why why education is wasted you have not you are not here in the beginning of the class no i must explain that part because our modern education is teaching people how to become a slave slave means servant they are not teaching you who you are they are teaching you how to earn some money that's all that is not education that is skill livelihood you should learn about what is the meaning of life livelihood secondary livelihood livelihood is to maintain my life but maintain and do what with my life that i should understand first that is real education uh, so here let's read further what is the use of all one's family members who are actually plunderers taking away money that is useful for the service of the lord in spiritual opulence then what is the use of a wife people don't like to hear all this <laughs> happy new year where happy new year what are you talking about in the new year day you know talking this is not happy <laughs> but actually if we learn to relish these statements then we will actually become happy if we learn to abide by these statements understand what why these statements are said they are bitter truth in the beginning they will appear bitter but when you give up material life these very same words will appear nectar so here it is said <clears throat> what is the use of a wife 
she is only the source of increasing material conditions in fact the word stri stri means what one who expands one who expands because a man is just alone once he marries he does not marry just one woman he will marry her entire khandan you know one entire family now joined to he is related now first of all that expansion then children will be there then friends status quo you know so house could be there so he has to work so his field of activities expand now and then of course grandchildren and everything and he has to maintain some status quo right so because he has to be respectable reputable in the society so he has to have money sufficient money to show his reputation all these are expanding our illusion we are thinking that this is this is life but one day i am i will die and in a second everything is lost our illusion is snapped we are snapped away from our illusion just like a dream we when we awaken we were we may, we may be doing big big things in the dream but one second we are awaken and that's it we cannot access any of that money suppose i am very rich businessman in the dream now i cannot access all those things anymore done finish so it's a, it's a illusion as if we have something we don't have so she is only the source of increasing material condition what is the use of family home country and community attachment for them merely wastes the valuable energy of one's lifetime this is the perfect message for happy new year i think i want to share this on social media let everybody <laughs> this is what should be shared for happy new year because actually if we really want to become happy we must know how to get attached to krishna and eventually we have to get detached from our material activity our material relations eventually we have to come out of that because anyway we will come out so right? we will die one day and we will come out by force we will be dragged out so it is better to do this with knowledge so and then our life will be successful all right so of course we can talk a lot about this subject i think i'll stop here any questions or comments or anything regarding this ग्रंथराज श्रीमद्भागवत की जय श्रीलभपाद की जय जय तो